What's up guys? Welcome or welcome back to the channel. This is your boy Brother Nature, aka the great one. Here we go guys, day 21 of flower. I know it's been a while since you all have seen the flower room. We did have a few join our live session uh, earlier today, but we did not have the room open guys. So here we go with the room all the way opened up. Uh, we did just run our second feed of the day. Thinking about increasing their feeds guys. Thinking about giving them less and giving it to them more often. We'll see how it works out because I do have a busy schedule and I would hate to alter that for this. Trying to make sure that I balance both out evenly. And as the days and weeks go by, it seems to be doing just that. So I really haven't been uh, too stressed out when it comes down to uh, just the overall maintenance and uh, just keeping these girls, you know, upright, keeping them healthy, keeping them bug and pest free, keeping them free of all diseases. And most importantly, guys, letting these girls produce their bud sites. And as you can see, guys, we got a lot of cauliflower in here is what I like to call it. All those white pistols. They're looking good. Happy to say that we are going to have some decent stacking. I was also worried about that, guys, because they did start when they did start to stretch. Let me rewind that a little bit. Uh, their stem just really stretched out and it had nothing below it. So some of those main stalks that you guys could see, they had stretched up along with those bud sites. And within a matter of a week or so, we started producing new bud sites on some of those same branches. So that uh, increased our yield for sure. I am uh, very thrilled about that, guys. I would like to give it all to Athena Stack uh, if I really knew more about the product. But I can tell you one thing, the product has definitely worked for the project. So I'm very thrilled about it. These girls look absolutely healthy and as happy as they can possibly be, guys. I mean, from my view, these girls just look just extremely healthy. The, the stems are really, really uh, lime green. And those pistols are just nice and thick. I've had situations where my pistols burned off uh, with me using uh, my IPM uh, recipe for my foliage spray guys and I've since then corrected the the mishap and I wasn't told that you guys had to uh, or well me rather uh, I wasn't told that you had to actually uh, pH your water to the plant's desired number and I've been feeding these girls at 5.9, 6.0 their entire lives, and they love it. So since I've corrected the pH in my foliage spray, guys, which was a no-brainer. I know some of you guys are scratching your head like, come on, Brother Nature. But hey, some of the simplest things at times can be some of the most harmful things to a garden. So it's best that people explain it the right way and that's what I'm here for, for those that don't know. Yes, you in fact have to pH almost everything to do with these plants. Even when you're flushing these girls out, I would recommend you to pH that water as well. You wanna keep these plants as healthy as you possibly can throughout the entire process, guys, and there's no time and no place for any type of deficiency or damaged leaves of any kind. I hear a lot of people say, well, when you get to a certain stage of flower, uh, your your leaves seem to lose their, their, their pigmentation, which would tarnish their color. And to a degree, I agree with that. If you have leaves that have been on that plant since the beginning of time, which means since that plant has been birthed, if you still have leaves, uh, that's sticking around guys oh, I'm gonna tell you right now some of those leaves are gonna go bad and if you don't remove them right away it's gonna slowly move up that branch and you're gonna have damaged leaves all the way up to the top 
no matter what stage of growth you're in. Veg is a little bit more forgiving. It's not as bad uh, when it comes down to flour because flour is a completely different process uh, than it is in veg. And a lot of growers or a lot of beginners uh, have that mistaken. They, they come in with the same techniques that they had in veg and apply them to flour and it just does not work that way on a lot of occasions. At times, you know, some of these plants are very, very strong and they refuse to give up and they will grow. But who's to say, you know, it grew at its full potential and I'm not here to, uh, you know, determine that either. I was not there and I don't even know who this mysterious person is that I'm talking about. But just to kind of give you guys, again, you know, an idea of what I mean. But just to move forward, guys, these girls are looking great. A couple new things that we did in the room and uh, we're gonna address every single thing that we've done uh, within the last week, guys, because I have been doing quite a bit of work. And, um, you know, like I said, I was scratching my head for a while, guys, on just uh, contemplating on what was gonna be produced in this garden. And, you know, we're finally getting to the point to where I have hope, you know? At first, I'm like, okay, man, this is, uh, you know, it, it gotta be genetics because everything else looks right. But, you know, what do you know? We, we actually met the uh, second trailer, so I'm happy about that. So for whatever uh, has reached that point, very, very thrilled. I'm, I'm not complaining at all, guys, you know. Uh, always the more the merrier, of course, but, you know, I'm not here to complain. Uh, but day 21, these girls are looking excellent. Um, over on the mint sherbet side, which is the left side of your screen, guys. I mean, that plant is absolutely blowing up. I have high hopes for that plant, even though she's a stubby buddy. That's fine, guys. Normally, a, stu a stubby plant will produce some very nice fruits, some very dense fruits, but just not a large amount. And that's okay, guys. You can't win them all. And all this is a growing experience for me just as well as it is for you guys. I don't know these cuts any more than you do. And we're all here just sampling them out for the first time, guys. Even though I have grown the North Wedding Cake before. That was many years ago. And uh, I'm pretty sure that they do not, I hope they don't, still have that same mother plant. Because that wouldn't be a good thing to uh, to come across. I'm pretty sure that uh, it's something close, if not better. I mean, just the way that it's growing now, guys, I am uh, excited, man. I'm excited to see what the next couple weeks got, um, what the next couple weeks got in store for us. Thought I saw something in the garden, guys. I'm always eyeballing. You know, they're looking at me and I'm looking at them. And we're both looking at each other till we both turn around and say, hey, what are you looking at? I don't know. What are you looking at? I'm looking because you're looking. You're looking because I'm looking. So we're just both looking, right? <laughs> That's how I like to see it. Man. Anyway, I, I kind of get, you know, I level off sometimes, man. That imagination is a, is a fun place to be in when you have one. But uh, like I said, man, these girls are looking extremely happy. Uh, but that, that mint sherb is really starting to thicken up. I can tell she's drinking up everything that I'm throwing at her, guys. And uh, we're actually going to start filling up our res tank as we speak. We're getting ready to increase their feeds, guys. We had these girls on the Athena's blended line on their normal side of the scale when it comes down to their feeding chart, guys. Now we're going to hit them up with the highest dosage that we can. And that dosage, it, it kind of moves up and down. We're gonna start them off, I believe, at 11 mLs per gallon. That's to set us roughly at a 2.5 EC. I'll call it a 2.3. We just got a new uh, TDS meter, so our numbers are looking great. I'm so thrilled. I'm actually blushing right now, guys, on that on that little $15 TDS meter, man. I'll tell you what, uh, it makes everything makes more sense, you know. But uh, many more great grows to come. Oh my God. You know, when you got the right tools, guys, uh, it, it makes everything a lot easier. I'm telling you, man, I, I can't preach that enough. But uh, yeah, so these, I mean, 
that mint sherb, I mean, she's gonna be exploding with some very nice fruits, guys. I'm imagining some colors coming off of her because I've grown mints before. I've grown pink mints, white mints, and I had some other cut of a mint. And uh, the last mint cut was not the best. I think it was uh, runts and mints. And yeah, that, that just did not work. You know, uh, shout outs to that grower or whoever tried to put that, that combo together. It just didn't work. I ran it several times and each and every time it, it just did not, it, it's like it overproduced without growth. It was crazy. You know, that reminds me of that mint sherb. I mean, every time I grew it, it was about that mint sherb size, you know, and I just got to do what I can, right? I got to, you know, I got to make those buds as big as I can. Yeah, so uh, that, that plant's doing healthy. You know, she's doing all right. Uh, this North Wedding Cake, I mean, it speaks for itself, man. I know you guys can't quite see where I am now, and we'll get to that, guys. I am gonna give you guys a bird eye view to see how we've opened up this canopy. To let you see those pistols, guys. Oh my God, they're so thick. I mean, we are gonna have some very nice fruit on this North Wedding Cake. She's also starting to uh, thicken up on her stems. Her stems are very light green with some hints of purple streaking, but not so much, you know, just, just really close to the fan leaves. But everything else, guys, from top to bottom is just really, really, really green. So uh, that's letting me know that that root ball is nice and white. We did have a couple roots poking out the uh, fabric pots but of course they always air prune themselves but I can see them they're all like you know when you get a, a fresh haircut and those those little hairs are starting to grow back and you can just see them poking out everywhere that's sort of how it looked like little white hairs everywhere but they self prune themselves within hours well air prune themselves within hours and that's not a bad thing guys that's actually how fabric pots work I'm actually taking a look at them now and I can see some of the ones that haven't died off or some of the ones are, that are just now starting to make it uh, to the point where they can bust through the bag themselves. Uh, sorry for that. You know, I, it's going to be camera movement and uh, everything like that, guys. But I did go through the trouble of cutting off my exhaust fans today. So we only have the, um, the oscillating fan going right now. Isn't that nice of me? I do have the uh, the 2x4 Gorilla Grow tent with the veg plants inside of it. I didn't cut those fans off, guys, because of course I would have to open up the room to keep the, uh, the doors from vacuuming in because I do have another exhaust that's connected to my tents and that actually exhausts the smell outside of my garage. So I never ever have any type of plant smell in my garage unless I open up the tent. And you know, within a couple hours, it's, it's back to normal. Uh, unless I just got some serious dank in here, then it ain't no, you know, it ain't no excuse in that smell. But you know, I haven't had none of that in a while. But you know, for the most part, you know, my exhaust system is, is pretty neat. I like the way I got it set up. Uh, it's going right uh, to, to where my water heater exhausts, and that exhausts out the chimney. And uh, my house is a two story. So uh, yeah, imagine. Uh, by the time he gets outside, it's already broken up, you know, so it's not even traveling outside, guys. And with these carbon filters, they do a great job as well. But, uh, yeah, the garden is looking great, guys. Uh, I know it's been a while, and, you know, I, we were trying to get these girls to show their true colors, and uh, I believe we gotten to that point. These girls are looking great. I couldn't be happier. I'm just looking around the garden and seeing is there anything that I could possibly redo or address? And, you know, other than tucking a few leaves, guys. Other than tucking a few leaves, and I know you couldn't see that, but I did just reach into the second row of trellis. This is the very uh, top trellis. We are running a double trellis in this five by five Gorilla Grow tent. It's a five by five by seven because we do have the extended roof kit on this uh, room. So uh, I think we have about maybe, I don't know, maybe eight to 10 inches from the, from the very top of the grow tent with the light being hung. So roughly it's about maybe about 
35 and some change inches away from the very tallest uh, cola. So that's not a bad thing, guys. Uh, par readings are sitting at around 640. So uh, hopefully in another couple weeks, these girls will get situated, be done with their stretching, and we can really get a, a, a really decent par number of where we're gonna sit these girls. And I've done my best with trying to get in here and uh, um, make some adjustments to my uh, ratchet straps. But to be honest, guys, I've said this in other videos, it's very hard to uh, address that light once you have it to a certain height because it, it's very complicated to get it to sit even. Uh, but sitting even, we don't have to worry about because my garden isn't sitting even, right? So long as we have it somewhat too perfect, then I'm cool with that. Hopefully we don't have to move it at all because right now it is perfect. It is evenly balanced. And all I have to do is adjust my par with my par meter. And that gives me, um, that gives me a, uh, a percentage per joule for each square uh, for each square foot of the tent. So to just to even out the numbers as best as I can, that par number, I mean that par machine comes in handy for that. So that's very important to have. I got a pretty good one. Yeah, we didn't buy it from Walmart. So uh, we bought it from the grocery store, man. And you know, when it comes to par meters, they don't play. They wanna make sure that they're selling the best guys. So that thing cost me about 350 bucks. Uh, but it was worth it. I've had it for about five, six years now, and I haven't even replaced the battery in that thing, man. That thing is just rocking. So, uh, you know, shout out to that company. I'll try and put it in the description uh, what company it is. I, I don't quite have it handy with me, guys, but uh, things are looking great. So, uh, again, just to go over a few things really quick, guys, of what we've done in the garden so far. Well, of course, we had to add some CO2. So we have a, uh, I don't know, it's a five, 10, I don't know, man, a 20 gallon. Yeah, it's a 20, a 20, a 20 gallon tank. There we go, 20 gallon tank. It's not a 50, because the 50s are tall and skinny. This one is short and stubby, so I got the short and stubby one. We have a, uh, a Titan, um, doohickey attached to it that works with the Titan controller doohickey on the rack here. And uh, they work great together, by the way. They, they work almost like they were meant to go. I wonder who came up with that idea. Anyway, I don't want to get drifted off, but uh, we did have to add some CO2, guys. And uh, I jacked that CO2 level up to about a thousand. I really didn't want to bring it up too high. So a thousand PPM is, is, is pretty good with the stage. Uh, of these plants and it's capping down to about a 900 so between 900 to a thousand those numbers stay pretty consi uh, consistent right up in there guys and I'm pretty happy with that it looked like these plants can take it and as they get older guys we'll increase those co2 levels we'll probably cap out around 1375 but you know 125 is my sweet spot so anywhere between those two numbers will be at our peak later on down the line and hopefully just hopefully that'll create some swell so that's one of the things that we did uh new in the room within the last week and uh, i can already see the benefits guys these plants are definitely uh taking off they're loving life uh it is chewing up quite a bit of co2 because we don't have a sealed room you you all know that we don't run sealed rooms in tents Right, we have to have that circulation of, of air in with the fresh and out with the bad is what they like to call it. So uh, with that being said, you know, in with the CO2 and out with the CO2, and, you know, money is just flying away guys. But you know, you get a lot of benefits out of it, man. You know, I would rather have a CO2 tank than uh, a TMB Naturals. Uh, I don't have anything against TMB Naturals, man. I, I used to rock with TMB Naturals all the time. I would have two containers uh, in my grow room at all times, guys, with tons of refills. But to be honest, that shit is a complete waste of money, guys. That shit is so expensive. It'll be cheaper for you to buy a tank for 150 bucks, and then your refills will cost you 11 to 13 bucks, depending on where you stay. So, you know, that, there you are. You know, of course, it's a lot more equipment that you gotta buy with it, you know, CO2 regulator, the controller, 
blah, 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 blah. Hey, but once you get yourself all situated and set up, guys, it is so much more worth it. And your grows come out so much more better. And you just have that much more control over your rooms. I can't even say more, man. Uh, so let's move down below, guys, to uh, see the second half of what we did. And mind you guys, as the title of the video said, all of this is to maximize your growth. Maximize your growth from beginning to end. Uh, I mean, the maximizing never stops, guys. Once the training stops, then, you know, the maximizing and other areas start. That's when that par meter really plays a part. That's when, you know, you have to have your uh, CO2 uh, to make sure that you have your room 100% dialed in with that PPFD. Um, because if not, you know, I mean, you're running higher numbers on your uh, Fahrenheit during, uh, well, you know, I run high numbers in my flower room. I like to keep my numbers around 71, I'm sorry, between 79 and 81 degrees, but at times it might peak up to about 85 degrees, you know, and, and I'll deal with that. You know, I'll just adjust my lighting, maybe come down on the, uh, the lighting PPFD and uh, increase the co2 a little bit more i don't know it, it just takes some tweaking but for right now guys things are flying uh the plants are really loving that ppfd on the co2 at a thousand um i don't know maybe in about another week or so we'll we'll increase it we'll increase it right before we have to do another refill but i can tell you like i said man this room is definitely chewing up that uh co2 for sure but i don't mind eat up all you need ladies blow up for daddy get nice and thick. I can tell you these girls are eating like it ain't no tomorrow. They ran through that 32 gallon tank in about eight days, guys, no cap, which is a good thing. And mind you, I'm only using that stuff for the flower room. But since we've slowed down their feed, I know I told you guys on my runoff, I like to see about 30% of what I put in. Well, we've changed those numbers, guys, because I could not hold my EC numbers doing that. The more uh, I will build my EC, the more or the faster I will flush it out. So, you know, my EC was just not necessarily all over the place, guys. It was just a lot lower than what I would like to see. So since then, we've uh, slowed down the amount of uh, solution that we're putting into the medium and getting very small amounts of runoff. So we've, took, we've taken it down almost half. So we were at 30% runoff, we're now at 15% runoff. And uh, the plants seem to like it so far. I don't see any complaining. They're actually starting to thicken up since I started doing that, guys. So uh, I'm imagining these, these stems to really thicken up over the weeks to come. Like I said, we're still at day 21, man. So these girls are only 21 days old, you lucky fucks. I remember when I was 21, must be nice. But yeah, these girls are only 21 days old, guys. And uh, they're just rocking it, man. We're 21 days in flower, not 21 days old. 21 days in flower, you know? They're, they're, they're close to two months old. We, we vegged them out for a month, and we're at week three into flower, so these girls are roughly about two months old. We'll have another 30 days to go before we cap out, guys probably take them down day 63 between day 63 and day 65 is my sweet spot i like to make sure that i'm seeing a lot of amber not so much milky i like more amber than milky so i like to go 50 50 if i can get it that way but nothing over that because then your fruits are just too ripe you know i've taken it early and you know i'll get 50 50 on my on my uh on my inventory at that point you know the bottoms just don't come out right so in order to get those bottoms hardened up i gotta make sure that i go to a certain point and sometimes those main colas get pushed to the point man but they always seem to you know hold in there they just get tighter and tighter you know this uh scorpion diablo ain't no joke man it remind me of those hps's i ran back in the day this shit really really hardens up uh the buds on here man it's just Crazy, crazy, crazy. I can tell that they're starting to swell now. They're just loving life. I mean, their entire bud sites are just white pistols. There's almost no more green. It was just green the other day, guys, I promise. Now all I see is white. I like that. 
So here we go, midway through the canopy, guys, like halfway, that first trellis. This is where it all started. This is where my hopes got even hopier. <laughs> oh man, they were so cute when they were just uh, first trellis high. But here we go, guys, midway through the canopy, and I can almost see straight through it, guys. We did a great defoliation today at day 21. I started to put it all on film, guys, but it's nothing that you guys have not seen before. And as you can see, I got tons of foliage still left on these plants. So I didn't go too hardcore. So it was really nothing, you know, exciting or uh, anything different that um, any other grower would do, man. You know, I simply just went after the largest fan leaves and we removed them. All of the other fan leaves that were... Uh, close to the top colas we left. I didn't take too many of those because those plants have to be protected. Those bud sites have to have to be protected. And if we don't have those, those buds will freak out, guys. So I would uh, definitely recommend to leave some large fan leaves, uh, you know, up top. And I'm still expecting these girls to uh, finish stretching. So, you know, I, I don't know how long they are are gonna stretch. I'm hoping that they stretch for about another week. Um, I would hope that this is not it, but uh, I don't want to take off too much, even midway, which I have removed almost everything. But there is another leaf here and there, just because I have, you know, I have faith, there we go. I have faith that that branch that I'm looking at, that you guys don't know or which one I'm looking at, but branch that I'm looking at I have faith that it's going to grow a little bit taller and that fan leaf is going to be sitting on the top of the trellis net on the very top so I want to make sure that I leave that for uh, it to do what it does I mean these plants store a lot of nutrients inside of those leaves so when the plants freak out and they go dehydrated they're able to drain those leaves that are adjacent to where they need it so I want to make sure that I don't deprive them of that, you know, so I left a few. And as these girls mature and we grow new leaves, because these plants are definitely going to grow new leaves, even some of the bud sites that I removed, those bud sites are also going to grow back, guys. And uh, as the weeks and days go by, I'll just get in here and finger pull uh, everything off from what we've already cut, which is a little bit further down. Uh, and we'll get to that. I just wanted to show you guys. Uh, that you can definitely see through this canopy. Uh, just a few hours ago, guys, it was a complete jungle. You cannot see the back wall. And uh, as of right now, guys, I mean, that airflow is just getting all up and down, top to bottom, side to side, airflow through this canopy, man. I'm, I'm very excited about that. Uh, we just have one oscillating fan that is way up top above this canopy guys and i don't want to point it directly at the canopy and i don't want to increase the speed because up top everything seems to be swaying just fine and uh you know it makes its way to the bottom so i wanted to make sure that you know throughout these canopies man that it was pretty airy you know i wanted to make sure that that light penetration was able to hit some of those butt sites because i mean way down below we're probably getting a par meter reading of about maybe 200, 260, somewhere along there. You know, if we're getting 600 above, we're getting about two, two and a quarter down below. So, I mean, that's enough to make some rock hard buds. Don't get me wrong, but you know, I wanted to make sure that we can actually get to those areas to rock up those buds. So now I don't think we're gonna have a problem. As long as we keep the maintaining up throughout the rest of the growth, guys, until harvest, I think we'll be fine. Uh, you know, like I said, I don't think there is a cutoff date on defoliating plants. I mean, as you see fit, handle your candle. That's all I can tell you. I mean, if I see something that I've, you know, placed in, in another direction and it keep blowing over a butt site, damaging it, then I got to remove it. Um, I don't care how much the plant needs it. You know, you're just gonna have one less fucking leaf to deal with there. All right, get over it. She's just so frosty, man. She is definitely starting to frost up. And I am gonna try and get some of those frosty shots for you before we end this video, guys. It's mainly on that North Wedding Cake. 
You know, I just got my new tripod, man, and I'm feeling, you know, kind of spoiled. There's no more shaking, you know? I'm in a comfortable seating position for once, guys. How about that? Got a nice, comfortable, I don't know if this is fucking velvet. Is it no goddamn velvet materials? Ooh. But yeah, man, plants are, are definitely um, defoliated. You know, I think I did a great job. You know, uh, a lot of people would say, man, you need to go harder, but I don't think so, man, because, you know, these plants are going to keep growing and I'm going to keep pulling leaves off accordingly. So right now, what I see fits, and we're gonna leave it exactly the way it is, guys, and uh, rock them just like this. All right, here we go, lowest point of the canopy. The very bottom, guys, you can see exactly what we did and how I uh, defoliated my plants today, guys. I did start from the very bottom of the plant, and I just started removing uh, all of the larger fan leaves first, and then we started cutting off branches uh, that were just not tall enough to even reach, not even close to the second trellis net, guys. So uh, we did go ahead and remove all those. All of the rest of the branches that are so close to the trellis net, we did leave those because if they can make it to the first trellis net, I believe we can, uh, you know, grow something that's worth keeping. So I did slow down on this north wedding cake when it came down to branch removal, even towards the center of the plant, guys. But as we were up on our second deck, our second tier of this plant, you can see that we can see straight through the canopy without any issues. Just as well down below, guys, we can see straight through the canopy. You can see that back wall. You can see that tray. You can see all the detail printing on the wall, guys. I think we did a great job. We did only go about two and a half feet up, maybe three feet in certain places, but not too many. We're not gonna take them all the way up to the second trellis net, guys, just for the simple fact that uh, we did a great job on defoliating, man. And we only got two plants in here, so it's not a doubt in my mind that we're gonna penetrate enough part to get down below to actually make those buds actual buds that we can use. So, uh, you know, as we grow along, guys, if I see anything different, then I'll make the choice to uh, do some further removal. But as far as in uh, doing our defoliation and uh, selective branch removal for day 21, guys, I think we've already met that. I think these plants are looking great so far. I would like to see how they're gonna look in just a couple days. Everything that I removed is probably gonna grow right back, uh, but they're gonna grow back a little bit different. They're gonna be new leaves that we can use, guys. New uh, solar panels for this plant to uh, store nutrients in and be able to get a fresh drink each and every time the plant needs it. So a lot of those uh, leaves that we had were already stressed out. They've already performed their acts. They did a great job at what they were supposed to do. So we had to retire them. So we had to remove each and every one of them, guys. And like I said, middle tier, top tier, we still have a few of those leaves hanging around, guys, because those top tiers, they really need that extra support. Yes, we could have removed them and they would have been fine, but I just didn't want to stress the plants out that hard, guys. So I think this way is a better approach uh, to making these girls do what I need them to do, guys, which is grow some fucking donkey dicks. We need some bud, man. I'm tired as hell of going to these local dispensaries, you know, 50 bucks every, you know, six, seven days, man. It is, it is tiresome, disappointing, and breaking the bank. So uh, I can't wait to uh, actually get some quality um, back around, you know, uh, man, I used to have it all, you know, taking that break. Oh man, I, I can't take breaks, dude. I, I took one break to vacation and that one summer, it just threw everything off, you know, but I needed that break like I stated, man. We have been going like, I know for sure, five years nonstop, just harvest after harvest, no breaks in between at all. You know, we had clones ready to go. We had enough room set up to where we could just, you know, as soon as we cut down, dry out, the room was full again, you know. Um, so like I said, you, know, you get spoiled, you think nine pounds is enough, you start, you know, going out to uh, bonfires and being around all these strange people you don't know and you came with a half a pound and, and, and you leave him with a, a quarter pound. So <laughs> you get what I'm saying, man. Hey, it happens, it happens. 
But most importantly, guys, these stocks are starting to beef up. They are starting to look like lumber now, guys. They're not so smooth and, and, and furry like they were before, guys. These things have definitely turned to sticks. They're real branches growing along this grow room right now, guys. And I like the look of it. I like the look of it. Excuse me. I like the look of it. I'm looking at some knuckles right now, guys, that I created earlier in when we were doing a lot of the training. And some of those knuckle areas that we created, guys, are some of the thickest branches on these plants. I didn't knuckle it everywhere like I would normally do it. I normally would just go around my plant just creating knuckles everywhere by just pinching the stalk, letting it reheal itself, and um, going through a panic phase of, of I can't get enough food to where I need it to, and it's just going in hyper mode. Uh, but I did do that in some selective areas, guys, and I can tell you it really paid off. I am so thrilled and happy that I applied that training. And uh, for different for this grow that we have coming up, guys, which is uh, the Gary Payton, I believe we're gonna throw the Gary Payton inside of uh, this five by five. And we're gonna have the Gorilla Glue inside of the two by four. We're gonna transplant her today. I'm gonna transplant her into a three gallon pot we're gonna veg her out for about another two, three weeks. We're gonna make sure we get her nice and big because that's the only plant that we're gonna have inside of that uh, two by four. So I wanna make sure I fill that two by four wall to wall. Uh, so like I said, it'll come out of the one gallon to a three gallon, from a three gallon to a five gallon, which she'll be flowered out in. Uh, by then, hopefully we'll have, you know, some nice plant coverage. We'll flip her over to flower and see what she can do again. This is a photo period uh, grow that I have going on here, guys. And the plants that you are looking at right now were clones. So uh, we knew 100% these girls were females. Uh, the three Gary Paytons are also uh, females because those were purchased as clones. Um, but that GG4 was uh, a seed. So, you know, it wasn't a feminized seed. So we don't know the sex yet. So, uh, I don't know guys, we'll see how that goes. Um, normally, if I went into panic mode like that, I'll just pop that one plant into flower really quick and just see what she can do. Uh, but I don't have the, the plant space to really be performing those type of trainings. Uh, because a lot of times when you pop a plant into flower, uh, it won't reverse or it'll take so long to reverse to where to have to start a reveg. And when you start a reveg, you know, all types of things can happen, you know, when you're going through a revamp. So I don't want to go through that. I just wanted to go through flower long enough to show sex and then I'll pop it right back into a veg. Uh, and that normally works for me guys, but I don't have the other room. I normally have three rooms. I only have two going right now. So I can't exercise that at the, at the, at the moment. So we're just gonna have to wait and see. Uh, so for right now, we're just going to treat that plant like she's a female and just go through all the training that we need and hopefully we'll stress her out a little bit to where she'll actually show sex before we even uh, flip her, her cycle. So we'll, we'll just have to wait and see on that guys. But for right now, you're looking at the mint sherb on the left and you're looking at the north wedding cake on the right. Uh, I do want to thank all of you guys for joining today and watching the video man i really really appreciate it thanks to all the new subscribers man you guys are great i remember i was at 100 subscribers man and i was like this shit ain't working for me these people don't love me they don't like what i'm doing man you people have completely changed my mind man thank you thank you thank you i can't thank you enough and uh we're gonna blow up man we're gonna go all the way to the top i think we got a, a few disbelievers in the building but, uh, you know, because a lot of people, they don't like these stages. They don't want to be walked through and, and, and have their, their, their hand held. And I understand that. You know, I was one of those same ones, man. I wanted to skip to it, you know. But these videos are educational, guys. And I hope I have a few of you growing along with me. Um, and I am going to start a Patreon, guys. But uh, as of right now, if you guys have any questions, any questions at all on what I'm doing or have any questions that I can help you guys out on, feel free to drop it in the comments, man, and we can go from there. Uh, but I am going to start a Patreon, guys. That way, uh, you know, I can give you guys my personal number and um, 
we can handle maybe like a uh, like a personal uh, voice or or, or uh, FaceTime type of a uh, call to where I can see exactly what you got going on in your garden and I can diagnose it uh, right away instead of you trying to explain everything through a text and I'm misinterpreting what you're uh, texting and uh, just can't quite, you know, it, it's always a difference between seeing something and reading something, you know, so I would rather see more than read more. So uh, stay uh, tuned and glued for that, guys. That is gonna be a process. I've never done that before. It was hard enough signing up my YouTube and Instagram and getting all that up to par. So just starting this whole Patreon thing, I don't know if it's worth it, but I'm gonna give it a shot anyway. My son thinks I should do it. He thinks, you know, I'm good enough, I guess. I don't know, thank you, son. But uh, we are gonna start that Patreon soon, guys. So I do wanna thank you guys again. And if you guys have not subscribed to the channel, man, go ahead and hit that subscription. I drop videos like this often every two to three days, guys. I know it's been about 13 days since you've seen the flower room, but I think it was worth the wait. Um, so uh, make sure you guys smash that thumb if you like the content. And if you are subscribed, man, keep it on all notifications. So that way when I go live, you guys can jump in the building real quick and ask some questions live. Uh, we do have the feature where you can go live with me, and that's another way that I can answer a few of you guys' questions, but that'll be for the world to see at that point. So I think Patreon will be a little bit more private uh, between me and that, that person. So uh, just stay tuned for that, guys. But before I let you go, I'm going to take y'all up top so y'all can see some of those butt sights from a bird's eye view. Yeah! Peace! Till next time.